Hi there everyone and welcome back to another video. So this one's been a long time coming but I did feel that it was about time that I revisited the MCOM blocks and gave anyone who is interested an overview of how they work and how you can use the blocks to create your own experiences using them. I'll be covering all of the blocks available to manipulate the MCOMs while we work through a basic twist on the standard rush game mode and I'll also look at some of the things that you can't do with them which would have been nice to be able to so you're aware of some of the limitations. When we finished I'll be providing a link to the experience that we are working on when completed in the comments below. Feel free to copy and change it in any way you like. The mode itself won't be usable as it stands but you can develop it into something if you want to with just a few tweaks and the knowledge that you have got about how the MCOM blocks work over the course of this video. Right great to have you all back and let's crack on with this guide to MCOMs. Bye. So let's get started and in this example game mode that we're going to create in this video each side will have a series of three MCOMs each that you can destroy in turn. The MCOMs will start close to each other and are going to slowly drop back closer to each team's spawn area and the first to destroy all of the opposing team's MCOMs will be the winner. You can see an example just running in the background here so it'll just loop over while I talk over it. As each MCOM is destroyed we'll also increase the few use time of the next one so the one that is closest to the opposing team's spawn will have a much longer fuse time and will take longer to be destroyed. Now just coming back to the rules editor before we start we are just going to set this up as a standard team deathmatch mode and I haven't altered any of the other settings so we can dive straight into the rules editor. And before I get too deep into it a little note for more advanced users the MCOMs actually exist in the game world throughout and are stored in an MCOM array and if we look just under the objective you will see that we can get all MCOMs in an array. You can access the MCOMs using an index position in the MCOM array if you want to and this is going to give you a lot more flexibility rather than the way that we are going to do it in this video which is target them by name and by the way if you're interested in learning more about arrays then you can just watch the first part of my arrays video by clicking the link at the top right hand corner now that all of that preamble is over and our little introduction is done let's get started with the blocks and start building our little experience So first let's start by looking at how we can initialize and place the MCOMs in the game world and then assign them to a specific team. As we want the MCOMs to be placed when the game starts we will begin by making our action in the first rule triggers when the game starts. So let's just go there we'll change it from ongoing rule to on game mode started and let's give this rule an appropriate name I'm going to call this initialize let's spell this correctly. MCOMs. This is going to be the first rule that we're going to build. So to begin with we're going to look at the yellow action blocks on the left hand side which allow us to set the properties of objects in the game or perform an action and we'll start off by placing and initializing the first MCOM for each team. The action blocks available for MCOMs feel a little bit strange initially because they can be found in different places but we can use the following blocks to set MCOM properties. We're going to go into the objective action blocks and you can see we have enable game mode objective just down here. We can use that one to enable or show an MCOM and we also have the set objective owner and you can see that this uses this little question mark this will also allow us to set the team for an MCOM and now might be a good time just to point out that the MCOMs in the game are treated as objectives and this is why you find the blocks for them under the objective sections. This has a positive side effect as well because the AI also see them as objectives and will head towards them so if you are making game modes with AI in them and you want the AI to go in a certain direction you can of course enable and disable objectives normal objectives and they will head towards the objectives that have been enabled but you can also do the same thing with MCOMs if you want the AI to go to a certain point on the map you can place an MCOM there enable it and the AI will head towards it just a useful thing to know really I think so let's do that first when the game begins we'll enable MCOM A and MCOM B so using the set objective owner we're going to drag that one into there we'll just duplicate it for the second 
team's first objective as well. So in order to set the objective owner, we need to get an objective. So we're gonna go into the objective, get blocks, the green blocks. We are going to get an objective. Let's duplicate that. I could have done all that at once, couldn't I? But uh, I didn't do so. Let's just carry on doing this. So we've got set objective owner, then we're gonna get an objective. And then from the selection list, we're gonna drag in our MCOMs and we are going to get MCOM A for one team and we are going to get MCOM D for the other team. And the way that I'm gonna work is team one is gonna get MCOMs A, B and C. Team two is gonna get MCOMs D, E and F. So we've got set the objective owner and we've got objective MCOM A and we've got objective MCOM D. Now we've just got to assign that to a team. You can see that there. In order to do that, we need to get the team ID block from player. Let's drop that one in there. We'll do the same just underneath and let us assign those to the different team numbers. So we will drop in there team one and let's assign objective D to team two. So we have set the owners of MCOM A to team one and the owners of MCOM D to team two. So next we need to enable these game mode objectives to make the MCOM visible on the map. If we were to run this at the moment, we wouldn't be able to see the MCOMs. MCOMs always exist in the game world, but you can't see them. So if you want to make the MCOM visible, you need to enable the game mode objective by setting enable game mode objective to true and conversely if you want to hide an mcom you just set the game mode objective to false and it will disappear off the map so let's do that for each of these let's grab the enable game mode objective again let's just pop in here we've got where are we we've got enable game mode objective let's just drop that in there we need two copies of this but i'm going to do this once and duplicate it then we need to get the game mode objective that we want to enable in this case we're going to enable a and we are going to get a literal to enable it and let's drag in true there we go that sets game mode objective a to enabled being true and that will allow us to place it on the map Let's do that same thing again with objective D. So we've got that, we'll just change that to D and we now have uh, A and D enabled and visible on the screen. So we just have a quick look at that. Both of those MCOMs are now visible on the screen when we start the game. Uh, but unfortunately the problem is we don't know where they are. They're placed on the map in a default position. And here we can see that they're enabled, but they're not really where we want them to be on the map. So next we need to make sure we know where the MCOMs are and we'll need some coordinates to place them. To place an MCOM on the map, we need to use the teleport block. And we can use the teleport block, you can see just in there to move around players, to move around vehicles, and we can also move around MCOMs. And to place any item, you need to find a vector position on the map that you want that item to be placed. Now, if you want more information on how to get vector positions, then I've also got another tutorial on that, and I've linked that at the top right-hand corner, and that might help you get the correct vector coordinates. I have already worked out what the positions are that I want to place the MCOMs in. So let's place our first MCOMs close to each other. Now I'm gonna place these blocks just before I enable the game mode objectives. And the reason for doing that is I want them to move to the correct position before I make them visible and then we won't end up with any weird uh, kind of MCOMs flying through space to get to the position that they need to go. We're not gonna get any weird movements. So let's teleport them before we enable them. So first we need to get the objectives that we want to move. So we're gonna move objective A and we are going to move objective or MCOM D. And then we need to create a vector for them to move to. So this three dimensional position. Now to create a vector, we need to go into maths. We are going to grab the create vector block. Let's copy that and put that in both positions. And then we need the X, Y, and Z positions that we are going to move them to. So in order to do that, I am going to grab the literals down at the bottom just here. And we are going to copy that across again. I've been a bit daft here. I could have just duplicated this create vector block once and copied it over. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's not do that twice. 
Let's duplicate that and drop that in there. So MCOM A, my first MCOM is going to go at position X value of eight, Y value of 105 on this map and Z value of 752. And let's place this one at X 22. Y 105 again, because they are pretty much at the same height and a Z position of 742. Each one of these is very close together. We also need to fill in this last block at the top for the teleport, this, this one here. This is the orientation or the direction that the item or player is facing in. You can have a little mess around with that if you want to, if you want to rotate the object around and face it in a certain position. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are just gonna set each one of these to face at zero degrees. So that's it, we have moved, teleported each one of the MCOMs into the correct position. So if you have a quick look at that, you can see that both of those MCOMs are now placed very close together in the correct position on the map. We are good to go and move on to the next stage. The final thing left to do in these kind of yellow set blocks, if you like, and that we are able to do, I should say, is we can also adjust the fuse time. So we're gonna set a short fuse time for each of the MCOMs. We're gonna just give them a default, an initial value to begin with of 10 seconds. So to set the MCOM fuse time, we can find them under the objective blocks and we can find the actual set block. It is the only block under the MCOM heading because it's unique to MCOMs and not objectives. You can't set a fuse time for a, a standard objective or capture point, but you can for an MCOM. So let's drag this set and confuse time we'll drag this just in there and you can see once again it needs an mcom so let's grab mcom a we'll set the fuse time for mcom a and it also needs a value i'm just going to grab the literal from here and let's set that to 10 seconds you can see so we've now set m confuse time for mcom a to 10 seconds let's duplicate that and do the same we'll just slot it in there and we will change that to D. And again, you can see we've dropped the mconfuse time setup in just before we enable them, just to be sure they're set up however we need them before the game begins, or at least before the players can see them. Now, just a note about setting the mconfuse time, you can actually set the fuse time at any point you want. So perhaps you want to increase the fuse time for an mcom while the game is playing, you can do that. Maybe somebody passes over a certain point or kills a certain player that activates an increase in fuse time. We're not gonna do that here. But you can set the mconfuse time at any point. So you can see in the little sample that I put on the screen right now that each time the player crouches, the fuse time for the MCOM is increasing by 10 seconds. It just demonstrates how you can dynamically change the fuse time if you want to at any point while the game is playing. And interestingly, if we just have a look at this, you can see that we can increase the fuse time even though the MCOM has been set. So you can extend the MCOM's fuse time if you want to, even though the fuse has been started. Now this code will be cleaning up later on to make it a little bit more flexible and add the extra MCOMs but for now let's uh, check the game and see if we can see these two MCOMs have been enabled and positioned correctly and as you can see the MCOM is set as the opposing team and is able to be armed and has a fuse time of 10 seconds. So now I'm gonna alter this code to set it up and initialize each of the other two MCOMs for each of the team. So all six MCOMs set up correctly. So here's a little challenge for you. You've been watching this video for quite a while and we've only produced a few lines of code. This is my challenge to you. I would like you to attempt to initialize the remaining two MCOMs for each team. You'll want to position them somewhere on the map and assign them to appropriate team IDs. You'll also want to increase the fuse time for each MCOM so that as a team progresses through the opposing team's MCOM, MCOMs they will take longer to destroy. I'm going to set the next MCOM to have 20 seconds and then 30 seconds for the final MCOM but you can do whatever you like and also remember that we'll only be enabling a team's next MCOM once their current one has been destroyed so make sure that only the first MCOMs for each team are enabled. The others shouldn't be visible. So I'll let you decide fuse times and positions. If you want to check where the MCOMs have been placed you just need to enable them but they should be disabled when the game starts for real. Right, pause the video now if you want to have a go at that and try that challenge for yourself. 
Right, okay, so here are all of my blocks set up. Yours might be laid out different or look slightly different to mine, but as you can see, I've used set objective owner to assign A, B, and C to team one, and the same for D, E, and F to team two. I've also teleported each one of the MCOMs into a specific vector or location on the map and I've just left all of these at the end as zeros and then I have increased the fuse time for each MCOM for each team so you can see A is 10, B is 20 and C is 30 and the same for the other team's MCOM so we've got D, E and F set to 10, 20 and 30 and finally I have only enabled objective A and D because we will only be enabling MCOMs as an MCOM previously is destroyed. So if uh, team two destroys MCOM A, we will enable MCOM B ready for them to attack. So that covers all of the things that we can do with the set blocks, all of the yellow blocks to set values. So next, let's have a look at some of the information that we can get from MCOMs and some of the different ways that we can use that in our game modes and some of the actions that we can trigger. So next, what I want to happen is for each player to have a message displayed that displays the current state of their own team's MCOMs, as well as how many their team has left to destroy of the opposing MCOMs. Now, there's many ways to achieve this, but what I'm going to do is add a few building blocks for that to happen that are not necessarily related to MCOMs uh, but will allow us to put all of that into place. Now we could track how many MCOMs have been destroyed by adding a variable that gets one added each time a team destroys an MCOM but as the purpose of this entire game is to destroy all of the enemy's MCOMs for this game we're going to use the game score to track that and the team that gets three will be set as the winner so we're going to alter the game scoring and the game score required to win and we are going to alter that each time an MCOM is destroyed Now, depending on the game mode that you select to use your MCOMs in, this might work slightly differently. If you want a little bit more information about the way scoring works in Portal, I have done a couple of videos on that, but it is just worth mentioning that we are using Team Deathmatch at the minute, which counts up to a winning score, and we're gonna use the default win condition. So we are going to set each team score to zero at the beginning, and each time they destroy an MCOM, we are gonna add one to that and we are going to set a winning condition or the score to win to three. So let's just set that up before we continue because we're going to be able to use the team's current score to work out how many MCOMs they have left to destroy. So let's add a new rule just to set up the initial uh, score system. We'll just add that at the top and we'll have that as set score to win. Uh, that's already, we're going to make this an ongoing and global rule and this will run before any other rule start. It will run before the game actually starts and in here we will set the score to win to three and disable the default game mode scoring. So let's just do that. We've got gameplay and we've got enable default game mode scoring. Remember in team deathmatch the default game mode scoring adds score on each time somebody kills someone. We don't want that to happen so we're going to disable that because we're going to alter the score each time an MCOM is destroyed. Let's just zoom in a little bit and now let's finally just set the score to win. Let's just find that. Uh, we have got set uh, game mode target score, that one just there, and we are going to set that to three. Three MCOMs destroyed, each team wins once they achieve that. So next, this is going to be a little bit strange, but we're going to also add a variable to store the MCOM that each team is currently on. So for example, team one's first MCOM is A, and we need to just track that so that when that's destroyed, we will know that we are moving on to MCOM B. Now, again, you probably find this a lot more flexible and easy to implement if you were using an array, and there are some other ways of doing this, um, but in this experience, let's just do this this way. So we're going to add a variable. We're going to go into manage variables, and we are going to create a new variable and we will call this current mcom and we will set this to a team variable so each team has oh spell that incorrectly so each team has a variable which tracks which mcom they are currently on 
let's close that and we're good to go. So let's just make sure that when the game mode starts, we initialize the current MCOM for each team. So let's add an additional rule. Uh, we'll just pop that in there and we will go with set start MCOMs. So let's make sure we set the current MCOM to the first MCOM for each team. So that's going to be team one's MCOM is going to be A. That's going to be their first MCOM or their current one. And for team two, it's going to be D. So we're just going to grab a variable. We're going to set the variable. Let's just drag that in there. And this is going to be the team variable current MCOM. Well, we want this to be for team one. And let's just grab that from there because it's just ready to go. So we've got set the current MCOM for team one to be MCOM A. And let's just do the same for team two. So set the current MCOM for team two to be MCOM D. So this means that when the game starts, this ongoing global rule will run right at the very beginning to set these two variables right at the very start. So the current MCOM for team one will be A and the current MCOM for team two will be D. So I think we've got all the information we need now to construct the message. Now I'm gonna say we wouldn't normally need to put this info in a message, but this is gonna allow me to demonstrate some of the information you can get from each MCOM and just construct something interesting. So to add this message, I've just moved down to the bottom of my original blocks and I'm just gonna add a new rule just underneath. And let's just shift that out a little bit so it's a little bit clearer. Hopefully that's not too small. And we will put display display game state so this is a message that is going to display to each player and we will put that on let's scroll down a little bit and find what we're looking for on player deployed so this message is going to display when the player is deployed and we're going to keep displaying this message while they're alive so let's go with we've got a control action down at the bottom uh, just here so while let's drag that in there so while the player is alive Let's get the player's state just there. So while, get player state. Well, we want the event player. That is the player that is just deployed. So while, the player that is just deployed. And then from the selection list, let's just get the player state bool list. And let's say is alive. Where is that one? I think it's close to the top. It is just there. So keep looping while the player is alive. And let's display a message then. Let's get how many uh, MCOMs we have left to destroy for this player. So let's display a custom message. It's going to be a bit hard to build this one if you're not used to this, but we will drag over a message. Let's just put this down here before we put it in place. And we will grab some text. So this is going to be the number of MCOMs we've got left to destroy. So let's put left to destroy. And then let's put a semicolon and two curly braces. The two curly braces allow us to slot in the value from a variable just in this block here. So they will get replaced by whatever value we put here. And what we need to do is subtract the current game score for the team from three. So we've got three minus the current game score. So let's just think about that for a second. If the score to win is three and the team has currently destroyed one, then if we subtract one from three, we will get two MCOMs left to destroy. Hopefully that makes sense, but let's build this anyway. So let's go math. Uh, let's get the subtract. That's what we want. Let's just pop that one in there. And we are going to subtract from three. Let's put that in there. And we are going to get the game mode score. So that will be under gameplay. Get the game mode score for this team, for this player. So player, get team ID. Get team ID. And let's get um, event player. That's the one that we want, isn't it? Event player event player there we go okay so we are going to show in this message box uh, the words left to destroy and then this brace here is going to be replaced with whatever three is minus whatever the current score is for this player's team uh, i'll just fill in the display uh, custom message just up here so we can see that we have the message we have where we want to display it we have the amount of time that we're going to display it and who we are going to display it Two. So the message goes in there. Let's put this 
on uh, the custom message slot just there let's grab that and we are going to place this on let's put it on message text one that's just not quite the header text the one underneath let's display this for a second so we'll grab the amount of time and just put that in there now let's just display that for one second. We could put minus one in there. It's not going to make much difference, I don't think. Actually, let's put minus one in there. It'll just keep displaying unless it's changed. And then we will display that to, well, let's display it to the event player, just like that. Okay, so this is all constructed. We've got this message and we've got uh, that block up there. I'm just going to leave that there for a second and then I'm going to drag this in there and that's the entire message. Display uh, custom message, left to destroy, and we've got all of that in there. Hopefully you can see that. So for the second part of this, we're going to display the current fuse time for the MCOM that the opposing team is currently on. This is going to get quite long as well. So let's go with user interface. Let's get the display custom message again. We are going to put in there the message box and we're gonna pop some text in there. So let's go with current MCOM mcom seconds fuse time remaining now as i say we wouldn't normally use these message boxes but it is a good way of showing you what we can display on the screen and how we can use these different properties so let's get the remaining fuse time of the current mcom the one that's currently set so for that we can go into objective you can see these get blocks just underneath the mcoms option if we can get the state of the mcom and we can get the remaining fuse time so let's get that so this is going to display the remaining fuse time and we are going to display the remaining fuse time for whatever the current mcom is for this team so we want to get the team id of this player Okay, so message current MCOM has this many seconds fuse time remaining, and then we have got the remaining fuse time for the MCOM that is stored in the current MCOM variable for this team. And we have managed to get the team ID because the event player is passed on player deployed. All right, let's just fill in the rest of these. So let's get um, a selection list, custom message slot. Let's set that to two, custom message slot two. And let's uh, let's have this on there for minus one seconds as well. So minus one just keeps it up there until it's changed, but we're going to continuously change it. Minus, uh, minus one, there we go. And let's display this once again to the event player, just like that. Okay. So we just have one final thing to do before we move this little block into place. And that is we need to round this to the nearest integer. When we get the remaining fuse time, it's given in hundreds and thousands of a second. And that's going to look a little bit weird when we display it. So we'll just round this number up so we get it as a whole number rather than a fraction. Let's drag that into there. And now that is ready to go into the correct position. Finally, we'll just slot this message in there so that that will display however we want it to. So as you can see, we can get the remaining fuse time of an MCOM. We just have to supply the MCOM to that block and it will return how many seconds are left. And let's just check this in action. So if we run the game now, you can see that we have the number remaining for a given side. And we can also see the remaining fuse time of our own MCOM. If we go to the opponent's MCOM and set it and then destroy it, you will see that the MCOM time counts down and then obviously ultimately it gets destroyed and you can see how many we have left to win. So we're coming close to finishing off this little game mode and the final thing that we want to do is trigger some actions based on events with the MCOMs in the game. Now there are a couple of ways of doing this. One is to use the built 
in events and we'll have a look at a couple of those first or the other way is to use the current state of the MCOM to trigger an event as well. Now we actually only need to detect when the MCOM is destroyed for our little game mode but just so we've got all of these options covered we'll have a look at every one of the options that are available to us just so that you can see how they work. So the first thing we're going to do is grab a rule and drop that in here and we'll just take a moment to have a look at the built-in events that are available to us. We have on MCOM armed, on MCOM diffused and on MCOM destroyed. So if we select on MCOM armed whatever is underneath in the actions is going to get triggered. So let's use on MCOM armed first and we'll just display a little message to the players to say that an MCOM has been armed and display who has armed it. So MCOM armed Let's call that rule. I don't like the capital letters. Let's go like that. MCOM armed. And then we'll just have a single action here. Let's display in the user interface. So we'll display a custom message. Let's get some text, user interface. Let's grab a message. And all we're going to do is say such and such a player armed an MCOM. So we're going to need some literals. Let's get our text and place it in there. We're going to put some curly braces in there and we can replace the curly braces with the name of the player that armed the MCOM. So let's go armed and an MCOM. And let's just drop that into the custom message. Let's build the rest of this message. Now, if we just right click on the rule and click on help, if we scroll down to the MCOM section, Let's just find it's a little bit further down. Um, where are we? There we go. So we've got on MCOM armed. That's the event that we are using here. You can see this will trigger when an MCOM is armed and the payloads are the armed MCOM. That's the MCOM that was armed and the event player. That is the player who armed it. So we can get the name of the player who armed the MCOM because that comes as a payload for this particular event. Let's get rid of that. Let's get our event payloads. They're just there. And then let's get the event player. So this is going to say this player armed an MCOM. Let's just finish this message off. Let's go with a literal. Let's display this just for five seconds to the players. So it's just going to pop up. And let's also put this in the header text. We haven't used the header text so far for any of our other messages. So that is going to be free for us to use. We'll just leave this empty so it's going to display to all the players. So you can see when an MCOM is armed, it will display this message, such a player armed an MCOM. So just a little challenge for you before we move on. We have the on MCOM armed event and we also have an on MCOM diffused event. Why don't you try making another rule just underneath this one that displays a similar message but this time will be triggered when an MCOM is diffused. Pause the video, it should only take you uh, maybe less than a minute. Give that a go and then restart the video and I will build it for you now. So here we go, let's build this second rule and this time we'll go with MCOM diffused spell it correctly that would help and then let's choose on MCOM diffused and let's just use this message that we had before that we built before because it's very similar to the one that we need but this time we will put diffused and MCOM so you can see we have used both of these events on MCOM armed and on MCOM diffused and in each case it's going to display a message to all of the players with the name of the player that's armed or diffused in MCOM. Now it's worth noting that whilst we don't really need to use these particular events in this game mode, if you did need to trigger some actions based on these events, this would be how you would do it. You could extend the action list underneath to add additional actions. Maybe you want to spot all of the players on a particular team. Maybe you want to play a voiceover or a sound or anything like that. We'll not do that here because it will take too long, but you can extend these actions underneath. So any of the actions underneath here will run whenever these events are triggered.
So now you'll notice that I have steered away from using the on MCOM destroyed built in events. We're going to look at that one last. But next, we'll just take a brief look at how we can also trigger some actions based on the changing state of the MCOM. You can use this in your game mode if you want to. We can use the Boolean state of an MCOM to also trigger actions. So let's take a brief look at that. We use a similar format as we did before. We're just going to display some messages to each team we don't really need to use this in our game mode but you might want to there may be some actions that you want to trigger based on this i'll leave that up to you but let's drag in an additional rule we'll just call this mcom state change probably not a sensible name for this rule but uh, we'll leave it as ongoing and this time we are going to change it to be an MCOM. So this is an ongoing rule for an MCOM. If you've looked at some of my other videos, you will know an ongoing rule will trigger if the condition changes this bit in here. So let's set up the first condition for this MCOM. And we are going to check the state of the MCOM. So let's get objective and let's get MCOM state just there. And we need the event MCOM. So let's just check the payloads. There we go. So that is the MCOM that has just changed its state. And let's just see if its state has changed. What have we got here? We've got selection list and we have got MCOM state bool. And let's just change that to is arming. There you go. So the condition of this MCOM is that it is arming. And let's also now check which team this belongs to. So we're going to do this twice, one for team one and one for team two. So we get different messages depending on which team this MCOM belongs to. So let's get another condition block. And this time we need to know which team this MCOM that is changed its state belongs to. So let's get a logic block. We're going to go with equals. Let me grab it out. There we go. And we need to get the team owner of the MCOM that has just changed its state. So let's do that. Let's go for get team ID. Let's go for objective and we can go with get current owner team ID and we're going to grab the MCOM. So we have does the current owner's team ID of the event MCOM equal, and let's get team ID, and let's get one. Let's just double check this. So if the MCOM state changes to is arming, and the team ID that owns that MCOM is team one, well, let's display a message again. So we're going to display a game mode message this time. So let's go with user interface. Let's get the game mode message. This is just a little bit shorter. It will display, just flash across the top of the screen for six seconds. Let's get a message. Uh, we'll drop that in there. And let's just say, well, let's just say, your MCOM is being armed. Now, if the MCOM belongs to team one, then we want to display your MCOM is being armed to everyone in team one, don't we? And then let's display a similar message, but to team two. So your team is arming an MCOM. There we go. So that's our first message based on the changing state of an MCOM. And you can see this is just an alternative way of triggering actions. So while earlier we were using the built-in events that are available for MCOMs, we can see we've got on MCOM armed and on MCOM diffused. We can also use the changing state of an MCOM to trigger actions as well. In this case, we have checked if the state of an MCOM has changed to arming, and we've also checked to see if the current owner of the MCOM that has changed its state is team one, and then we have displayed an appropriate message to each team. You can do the same for any of the other states. We aren't going to extend this beyond that because I think we've made our point here, and you can also extend the actions as before, so you can make anything happen inside here. We have just decided to display a game mode message, uh, but you can do this however you want.
Right, next, another little challenge for you. What I'd like you to do is this rule triggers when an MCOM changes state and the MCOM that changes its state belongs to team one. I'd like you to do this rule again. So change this rule, duplicate it, and change it so that it works for MCOMs owned by team two. Once again, you can pause the video if you want to. This should be relatively simple, but let's see how you get on with that. Even better, if you don't duplicate it, you just try and construct it for yourself. Pause the video as before, and I'll be back in a moment just to show you how to do that. Okay, so here I am back. We've got this original rule here. I am going to be a little bit lazy and I'm just going to duplicate that. Why not? Let's just scroll that up a little bit. We've already got most of the code there. But this time we want to check if the MCOM that is arming belongs to team two. And we're just going to swap around the messages. So if the MCOM that is arming belongs to team two, we want to tell team two that their MCOM is being armed. And we want to tell team one that their team is arming an MCOM. Nice and easy, quite simple to do. Right, okay, so we are nearly at the end now. And the final thing that we want to do is deal with an MCOM being destroyed. Now, this is a little bit more complicated, so stay with me. And we also need to do this rule again twice, once for team one and once for team two. So we'll do the first one. We're just going to scroll that up a little bit and let's just start here. So let's add a new rule just underneath. There we go. And let's call this on MCOM destroyed. And let's deal with team one's MCOM being destroyed first. So we need the event changed to on MCOM destroyed. And we're just going to check that the MCOM that was destroyed was for team one. If you remember, the MCOMs get destroyed in sequence. So for team one, the sequence is if they destroy MCOM A, it will move to B, from B to C. And then once C is destroyed, the game will be over. So let's just check that the MCOM that was destroyed on this occasion belongs to team one. So I'm just gonna be a little bit lazy. We can see that I've already checked this kind of thing just with this condition up above. So let's grab that and drop it in there. So if the current owner of the event MCOM is team one, that means team one has just had one of their MCOMs destroyed. So remembering the sequence A, B and C for team one, let's just check which of the MCOMs was destroyed in this case. So if we want to go with equals and let's get the event MCOM. So if the event MCOM was equal to, well, we want to get an objective. Just drop that in there. And we need an MCOM. There we go. Drop that one there. So if the event MCOM that was destroyed was MCOM A, we need to move Team 1's current MCOM to be MCOM B. So let's do that. We've got variable, set variable. Let's drag that in there. Current MCOM for, well, it's for team one. And we want to set the MCOM to be B. There we go. So if the MCOM that was destroyed was equal to MCOM A, then set the current MCOM for team one to be MCOM B. We just now need to duplicate that as we move up the scale, sort of. So let's duplicate that. So if the MCOM that was destroyed was MCOM B, let's set the current MCOM for team one to be C. And then finally, if the current MCOM that was destroyed was objective or MCOM C, well, we don't need to move on to another one. That really just means that this game is over for team one. So let's display a message. We need the user interface. Let's display a game mode message. There we go, just there. And let's display. Um, 
let's just display game over shall we so we'll grab that and we'll put game over all mcoms destroyed there we go so we're nearly there but we're not quite finished with this rule there's just a couple of extra things that we need to do we also need to enable the mcom that we've just moved on to for that team and we also need to remember that we need to increase the game score for the team that destroyed the mcom so let's just do that now the first thing that we're going to do is enable the game mode objective or the MCOM. So let's go with enable game mode objective. Just drop that underneath there. And we are going to enable the current MCOM for team one. So let's get a variable current MCOM for. Well, I'm going to be lazy again because we've been here for quite a while. And we're going to enable uh, the current MCOM for team one, which we just set up here. And let's set that to true and then finally we need to increase the game score for the appropriate team so let's go under gameplay let's get the set game mode score and we want to set the game mode score for team two because we have just checked to see and it is team one that has had their MCOM destroyed. So it is team two that must have destroyed it and we're going to increase their score. So in order to do that, let's get the game mode score for team two and let us add one to that. So let's go with math, add, get game mode score for team two and let's be lazy and drag that across there and let's add one to it. And that completes this rule for team one. Let's just double check what we have done. When an MCOM is destroyed, if that MCOM belongs to team one and the MCOM was A that was destroyed, we will move on to B, which is the next one in sequence. If it was B that was destroyed, we will move on to C, which is the next one in sequence. And if C was destroyed, that means all of Team 1's MCOMs has been destroyed. We'll just display a game mode message, game over all MCOMs destroyed. We will then enable the current MCOM for Team 1, and we will add 1 to the game score for Team 2, because they are the ones that have obviously destroyed that MCOM. Now then, final challenge for everyone who has managed to get this far. What I'd like you to do is do this rule again, but this time we want it to work for team two instead. So if the MCOM belongs to team two, what sequence of events do we go through in order to make this game mode work? Pause the video for a moment and you can go away and try and finish this final rule for this game mode. And I'll come back in a minute and I will construct that for you. So we're back again and let's just finish this off. This was our original rule. I'm just gonna change this to say on MCOM destroyed team one so I can keep track of what I have done. And I'm going to be a little bit lazy once more and I am going to duplicate this rule and just place it underneath and just make the necessary alterations for team two. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit more clearly. Let's go with on MCOM destroyed for team two. So what do we need to change? Well, we need to check to see if the current owner of the MCOM in this case was team two, because we're checking team two's MCOMs. And if we remember team two's MCOMs are D, E and F. So let's say if the objective D was equal to the event MCOM, so was the event MCOM that was destroyed D, change the current MCOM for team two to be MCOM E. If the MCOM that was destroyed was E, then let's change the current MCOM for team two to be F. And that's the final one. So if the MCOM that was destroyed was F, then we're going to display game over all MCOMs destroyed 
Um, I put this little extra bit in here. Um, let's go with, let's just take that out. We don't necessarily need that in there. Actually, I'll take that one out from up there. While I was away, I added a little bit extra. Let's just have a look underneath. So we've got enable game mode objective for team two this time. Then finally, it would have been team one that destroyed team two's NCON. So let's increase their score. So I'll set the game mode score for team one to whatever team one's score currently is plus one. And that is the completed MCOM destroyed rule. So what you're gonna find now, if we save this experience, this experience is all completed and done. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna run through this, just check that this all works as it should do, uh, and make sure that the game mode is working as intended. So as we run through the game mode now, we just want to check that if we destroy all the MCOMs, the game win condition is hit and everything works as intended. Now this has been a really, really long video. Obviously I've done a lot more code in this than I would normally do, which is why we've taken some shortcuts towards the end. Feel free to watch this over again and have a look at the code, or I am going to provide a link to this experience in the comments just below. But I'm also going to include an extendable version of this, which can be edited to your heart's content if you want to, and for any map. So I'm just gonna include a little bit of a tweaked version. The tweaked Week's version might be a little bit more difficult for some of you to use, but you might want to just have a look at it and see if it's useful to you. Ask me any questions you like about the tweaked version um, of this particular experience. So hopefully this has given you a really good introduction on how to use MCOMs in your game mode. We've looked at all of the blocks available and how to use some of the actions that are available as well, or all of the actions that are available. Of course, you can do some crazy things with MCOMs. You can, of course, move them around the screen mid-game if you want to using Teleport. You can see this working really well in the Payload game mode, uh, which was featured as an official game mode in the actual game itself, an official portal game mode. You can, of course, switch them over teams mid-game. You can enable, you can disable them. You're really just limited mostly by your imagination, and you can do some weird and wonderful things with them. Unfortunately, due to the fact that you can't, reset them or diffuse them with an action so once the army process has begun you can't stop it through code uh, for example this does make its use a little bit more limited than it would have otherwise and you can work around some of those limitations but to be honest there's a lot of messing around and it wouldn't yield really great results so we have discussed this before and we would have liked to have seen some additional blocks so for example we would have liked to have seen a block that would allow you to reset an MCOM once it's been destroyed back to its normal state rather than it disappearing off the screen. Perhaps some other things in there like disabling the arming sequence so you might have the ability to interact with the MCOM but that doesn't automatically trigger an arming sequence. That would have been great for example for um, ammo drops, weapon drops, things like that. You could have had an interactive box uh, that you could have interacted with uh, without arming the fuse. Uh, and there were a few other things that we would have liked to have seen. You never know, they may appear in a later iteration of Portal. Maybe they will add them to the Portal game mode as we go along. Who knows what's happening in the background? I certainly don't. As it is, the MCOMs are a nearly complete piece of work and they are very, very useful for a lot of different game modes easy to make your own search and destroy game mode if you want to but we just miss those extra little bits that would have made them brilliantly brilliantly more flexible anyway that's enough for this video it has been a long long video you may have watched this in a few parts but hopefully you've got something out of it and i haven't asked at all for anybody to subscribe but I do want to say this, if you have managed to get all the way to the end of this video and you are still listening, uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Obviously, don't forget, click the like button if you've got this far, as always. Check out the links in the description below to get access to both of the game modes that I've created, both this one that you're seeing on screen and the additional one, which I've just tweaked to allow you to set it up for additional maps. And if you need any help with that, just let me know. But this has been long enough. Thanks for watching. Take care. I look forward to seeing some MCOM mods or at least seeing your work that you've done on this particular video in the future. Take care, everyone. Thanks very much. And I'll be back with more at some point in the future. Ta-ra. I'll see you later.